The GeForce 2MX is a very significant video card and to fully understand why we have to look at the past, let's start with the GeForce 256. The first reviews are from around October of 1999. It's a 220 nanometer card with 120 megahertz core and 166 megahertz for the RAM. There are versions with SDR and DDR memory, but for this video, whenever I say GeForce 256, I'm talking about the SDR version. It has four pixel pipelines and each can process one texture per clock and it has four render output units. In April of 2000, the first reviews of the GeForce 2 GTS appeared online. This card is in a smaller 180 nanometer process. It's got a 200 megahertz core clock and 166 megahertz of DDR memory. It has still four pixel pipelines, but each can process two textures per clock and there are also four render output units. And this is where the GeForce 2 MX comes into the picture. In June of 2000, the first reviews started to appear. It is based on the GeForce 2 GTS, so also manufactured in the 180 nanometer process. The core clock is a little bit lower, only 175 megahertz, and we have to put up with SDR memory running at 166 megahertz. It only has two pixel pipelines, so half of the GeForce 2 GTS, but still each of those can process two textures per clock, and we have two render output units as well. Comparing the MX with the GeForce 2 GTS, it has roughly half the fill rate and also half the memory bandwidth. And if we compare to the GeForce 256, it has an advantage in fill rate, but the same memory bandwidth. The GeForce 2 MX was a mainstream card and it replaced the TNT2, an older card that launched just over a year ago. It was also the first mainstream card with transform and lighting capability. The GeForce 2 MX has all the features of the full GeForce 2 GTS, such as HTP4X support, the Nvidia shading rasterizer, and it's got the HD video processor, although slightly less capable. It also introduced twin view support for driving, for example, two monitors or a monitor and a TV. And it also introduced digital vibrancy, which can make your picture look a little bit more vivid. A lot of these GeForce 2MX cards have passive cooling and you also got to compare the outputs in terms of VGA, DVI, TV and so on. There are also some differences. In terms of pricing, this card was priced very aggressively and it cost just over $100 when it launched. For NVIDIA, the GeForce 2MX was a really important card and a huge success. It massively increased their market share with mainstream gamers. Working with OEMs, they also loved the chip, it was cheap and had all the features that you could hope for. It is also low power and eventually ended up in a lot of uh, mobile devices like laptops, for example. By launching this card, NVIDIA also brought the transform and lighting technology to the masses. Game developers, they usually program for the lowest common denominator and now we have a mainstream card with TNL support. The GeForce 2MX card I'm using is from Elsa, the Elsa Gladiac MX. This is a review card provided to me by Electromine and as a thank you we got a 20% discount voucher for you guys to use. Check out the details in the description. Before we look at the benchmarks, just a few words about the test system. It is very modern. Check out the details below in the description. There's also a video link for a build video to do with this test system. Keep in mind that if you use these video cards in an older system like a Pentium 2, you're not gonna get the same performance. I'm using a very fast processor in order to really see what these graphics cards can do. So let's briefly talk about the performance comparing the GeForce 256 with the GeForce 2 MX. They are very similar. Sometimes the GeForce 256 is faster, but in a lot of cases the GeForce 2 MX is slightly ahead. The power draw results are really interesting. The GeForce 256 consumes a lot more power and uh, there are reports from back in the day that a lot of motherboards couldn't handle this video card.
So the game's benchmarked run quite well on the GeForce MX, but what about some other games, especially newer ones? So next up we have a few games and how they run on this card. I did have some issues with Blood 2, it seems the processor is too fast, it's glitching out a little bit, so I had to turn on VSync to slow everything down. Um, it still has some weird movement glitches and the overlay would also not work out, so I turned it off. remaining urban centers. I thought so much of City 17 that I elected to establish my administration here in the citadel so thoughtfully provided by our benefactors. I've been proud to call City 17 my home. And so, whether you are here to stay or passing through on your way to parts unknown, welcome to City 17. This must be a mistake. I got a standard relocation coupon just like everybody else. Welcome to Mars. All new arrivals need to check in at reception. Welcome to Mars City, Union Aerospace's premier research facility. To expedite your processing, please proceed directly I gotta to reception. Get out of here. Welcome to Mars, Marine. Let's talk about overclocking. I used the NVIDIA driver and overclocking the core, it's a given. The core is based on the same one as the GeForce 2 GTS, which runs at 200 megahertz. So uh, you can just put 200 megahertz in there and you basically are guaranteed that it will work. I overclocked it a little bit higher to 220. The RAM, however, is where you're gonna get the most uh, performance. The SDR memory is quite slow. I ended up with a final clock speed of 185 megahertz, which gave me stable results. At 190 megahertz, I would see some uh, glitches uh, in 3D Mark. So the 3D Mark 2001 score improved from uh, 2919 to 3328, which is a nice improvement of 14%. Throughout the video, you could also see some NVIDIA tech demos from back in the day. They all run at 1024 by 768. So let's wrap it up. This is a really good replacement to the GeForce 256. It performs basically on the same level. However, it's really easy to find on eBay. It's cheap as chips. It consumes a lot less uh, power and it's not gonna give your old motherboard any issues. The card is very suitable for older games and if we want to put a time frame on it, let's say games before the year 2000. You can use it in a lot of projects running Windows 98, Millennium Edition 2000 or Windows XP. 
In terms of drivers, the one I use is from 2004. And the main reason is because I'm benchmarking a lot of video cards. I want to make sure I can use one driver and compare all the results. Now, if you use the GeForce 2MX in an older machine, like a Pentium 2, for example, you have a lot more options with using older drivers, like I call them period crack drivers. So you basically pick a game and you uh, get a driver that's six months or 12 months uh, after the game was released and you should get the best performance and compatibility. So what an awesome card. Back in the day, it was a really good value. Gamers loved it. They got all the features and the compatibility with uh, TNL for a very low price. Some of the buyers of a GeForce 256, yes, they were a little bit upset. Now for Nvidia, they got huge access to a big market share of the mainstream gamers. And they also got the foot in the door with OEMs and with game developers pushing the TNL technology. So that was the GeForce 2 MX. Now, if you know this card from back in the day and you've experienced the GeForce 2 GTS coming out and the prices dropping and the GeForce 256 and all of that, and maybe you had access to the internet and you were in forums, share your story. I'd love to know what impact the GeForce 2 MX had in your life. And as always, all the usual YouTube stuff. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. If you have, thank you for supporting. Hit that like or the dislike button. Share the video with your friends. And I shall see you soon with another video.